All right, we are in a private residence here in Kansas, and we have Scott here. How are we doing? We're doing great, and his wonderful dad. What are we here to see? We're gonna look at a uh, 1939 Shepard elevator, and uh, then we'll have a special treat after that with a uh, 1920 car elevator. This is gonna be awesome. Before we ride the elevator, let's take a look around. This right here is a, this is your residence, right? That's correct. This is his kitchen, and the cool thing about this residence, look at this high ceiling and the beautiful work on the ceiling. Now we're gonna pan over here. He's got the old SO sign. Wonderful Lazy Boy couch. And a nice projection TV. But what's over here next to the TV? I got Jason. What's over there next to the TV? Elevator. Let's take a look at it before we move it down. It's not just any elevator. It's an old Shepherd home lift. There's the logo. All right, bring it down.
This is the controller, right? Yes. Yeah, all the Awesome. Now, Scott here is going to show us some of the safeties he's put on this thing. Yeah, so so really uh, most of the safety on this elevator is actually integral to the original design. Uh, so we've got, a, we've got a few things. We can look in the front here and uh, talk a little bit about safety. And, and uh, we talk about safety, we've got a, uh, we've got a door interface lockout. This, this actually uh, keeps power from going to the elevator when the door is open. The elevator is disabled. This will prevent this will prevent somebody from from uh, running the elevator down and leaving the door open, so that somebody can't walk into the. So this is the original running cam right here too. Right, and and so uh, the the uh, not only is that a power disable to keep someone from running the elevator down. Secondary, that becomes a door lock interface. So once the elevator's down, you can't open this door. From a, from a safety aspect, I'm gonna just stop it here. That's actually with his final limit switch. So that, that, yeah, so we've got two means of stopping as the elevator comes up. There's a first and primary stop, which is intended to be the stop height of the elevator. This is just an override. In the event the first step fails, this second, this second switch would, would be activated. But the first switch is on the back side of that, and you'll see a little cam kind of come up there. Yeah, I guess the wood blocked it. But, but anyway, so you've got, you've got two means of stopping. The uh, other thing that I want to show you will be inside. I'm going to run this thing down a little bit, and uh, we'll get it down to a certain level, and I'm just going to override stop it here since nobody's in there to stop it for us. So we can look in the top of the car. You got two relays, one up, one down. So as we come in here and we look in the top of the cart, we're going to see several things. Number one, you see switches. You see a switch on this side. Same thing over here. These switches are actually what ties to that uh, stop down below, which you seen earlier. And, and so those are actual uh, stop switches for the, for the down. Secondary safety, which is actually really cool, there's a second set of switches in here. And what these switches go to, they go to this torque shaft. So if either one of these chains, and they're independent, if either one of these chains were to get slack, say the cart bound up or anything like that happens, this will rock. As soon as that rocks, it will hit the switch and disable power to the elevator which basically renders it useless because something's malfunctioning on it. If in the event one of these chains came loose, say a key, something dropped for whatever reason, this thing will snap down, this torque shaft comes across, and down inside of here there's another safety device that actually wedges itself, and it will really, the harder you push down on the elevator, the tighter that will get. So it would prevent a free fall situation. I could literally come in here and torch these two chains and this, this elevator, it'll, it'll move just a few inches, jam up and stop. That's in the based track. on Otis Elevator's original safety device. Okay. So yeah, this, this is a pretty epic elevator you have here. Let me Thanks. get a close up of yeah. that plate in there. Just sliding the, in there. With the uh, information on it. Let's see, I'll have to use the zoom lens to see if I can read that. So yeah, this is a pretty epic elevator here. Here it comes up. Now 
A big thanks to Scott and his wonderful dad for showing us this elevator. One other thing I'm going to show you, uh, I don't, uh, I don't presently uh, have the the uh, nut on the front that this handle would interface to. But in the event of a uh, of a total power failure or a elevator failure, what they did back in the day, this cover panel, this cover panel would have been on the on the front up here, which we've got all this exposed for the video. But you can hand down, crank it down. You would you would have had a a uh, hole in there where you'd put this thing through, and I'm told about 600 turns will take it down. But uh, it would be exhausting. But that's that's what this was for. Yeah, so you can hand crank and wind it by hand. So yeah, this is what the door up here looks like, all put together. Beautiful ornate wood. The door is original from 1936, right? That's correct. Yeah. All right, Scott. A big thank you for showing you us bet. this awesome elevator. Glad glad you guys came out. So. The video's over, but it doesn't have to be. You can always watch more, and you know what to do. That's right. Click the buttons. Click here, here, or here. And don't forget to subscribe and light up that bell. Until next time, bye y'all.